Hi guys, you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This, where we basically get to look at everything from business, finance, and the economy. My name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show is my co-host. I'm Arisa Ugu, and today we're going to be talking about the CBN's decision to float the Naira, how it affects individuals and their businesses. Now, you guys have accosted us, harassed us, <laughs> sent us messages via email, on social media, Facebook, asking us Twitter. how this affects you as individuals and to remove the financial jargon and explain it on our show, analyze this. So Tunji, do you want to explain to the audience how a floating exchange rate is different from a devaluation? Um, basically, there are two ways to which your currency can be. It's either it's pegged or it's floating. So if it's pegged, it's like what we had uh, previously, which is what the central bank said is 197 naira. So if you're angry about that, whatever, it is 197 naira, irrespective of what you think. But on the floating regime, it's kind of like market forces determine its price every day. So at the beginning of every day, um, the um, regulator takes the bids of all the dealers and kind of says, okay, this is, we, we, we kind of take an average of what, the, what their bids are, and we uh, fix the NIFEX rate. The NIFEX is the Nigerian Interbank Foreign Exchange Fixes. Stop looking at me that way. Yes, now, the, the F is silent, right? But the NIFEX rate is what we use to determine the price through the day. So it starts at the NIFEX rate, then through the day, it starts to go through, uh, yeah, goes up and down. Now, at each point at which you bid, is what we call the spot rate, right? So it's you're meeting it at the spot, right? <laughs> you, you get that, right? So I'm particularly excited by this move from the CBN because yeah. I think that it will help to foster growth in our economy. I love that CBN put in that $4 billion to sort of that was absorb the, the pent-up pent demand, demand yeah. in the um, economy. And the thing is, we've seen an impact. Mm -hmm. It went from 320 to 281 the yeah. first day mm -hmm. it went back up slightly because people i think are still a bit well, uncertain yeah, about but i think the thing is we can be a broke economy but it doesn't mean that we can't set policies that will foster growth in our economy i'm particularly excited about the introduction of the futures fx market in nigeria because i think that it reduces the pressure on the spot rate and spreads out that demand over the future so for example let's say you're a foreign investor and you want to take advantage of cheap assets in nigeria let's say you have a million dollars you bring it into nigeria you convert it at the spot rate of say 282 or 279 and you invest that money in the stock market now to hedge your position you now have the advantage of buying in the futures market and saying we want to exit Nigeria in 2017, December. Let's say CBN's rate is around 225. That means CBN has basically bet on the fact that the Naira, Naira is going to, to appreciate. appreciate. Now, for, in, for foreign investors, this means that you have an exit strategy, which helps them have more confidence in investing in the Nigerian economy. Well, I think my, my joy is the fact that businesses can go back to work. I mean, mm. those factories that have been shut down because yeah. they couldn't get raw materials, because they couldn't get FX to bring it into the country, can now open up again. And then workers who were laid off because of cost they couldn't mm. stay at work will now be able to go back to work. And generally, the economy can start working again. People that were, um, I mean... I was at the supermarket yesterday and I was trying to buy this foreign cornflakes and I couldn't find any. Yeah. And you can just imagine how frustrating, frustrated, um, 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 importers are at this particular time. But anyways, we went to the streets and we got to ask you guys what you thought, uh, a floating currency is and how you believe it affects you and your business. And this were the responses. <laughs> um, yes, I am aware that Naira is not floating. It's not a floating currency. But right now, since the CBN has decided to float the Naira, now the peg has been removed. Now the market demands how, how much the Naira trades for a dollar or against other, other foreign currencies on the market. Right now, the last I heard, that was last Friday, was 285 Naira to a US dollar on the market. I, I buy and sell and I buy my stuffs from America. So definitely, now getting a better exchange rate will definitely help my business. I'll be able to sell cheaper and, you know, make more profits. Things are that today, it's now about 352 average. That's the, like the black market, basically. The um, alternative market. 
the the currency it's still very high so right now i think as every with every nigerian you're very careful with your purchases you're taking calculated risk right now you don't over expand yourself in certain like in certain products and then end up not having to sell them for less and make a loss so you just need to be very careful how you plan or better still let people order and then at the rate at which they order you you take your you, you get your stock and then you ship to them so they have to wait for like a period before they receive their product that way you manage you manage your 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 spending or manage your profits and all that i think the dollar um will stabilize against the front of against the dollar in it will be still a while while we have a lot more exports as against imports i think also when we buy naira more as against buying foreign exchange goods when there's a less demand on the foreign exchange it will naturally go down it's just the law of demand and supply basically and then we should learn there's so many things we can do in this country you can provide services even if you have to import a few things and then you complete the rest of it here it still helps the naira in some sort of way as against having to depend heavily on exports only i mean no imports only basically that's what i think it would take like a year or two when we come into the knowledge of the fact that we need to create so many things in this country by ourselves so many things and the opportunities are there we just need to look and be patient enough to work through it I know what it means for the Naira to be floating currency is that I heard that um, the CBN has ruled out the new policy, FX, that is Forex policy, that will make people have access to Naira dollar for them to do their business. So it may be a problem, you know, you haven't going to buy dollar from the black market again. So you can easily walk to your bank and then you get dollar. As far as I'm concerned, I don't buy the idea of importation of goods, you know. But for now, since we don't have, really have much, you know, manufacturing country, but uh, manufacturing companies, you know, so at least with the little of what we can import, and I feel if the government puts more effort, you know, instead of people that are using their money to buy dollar grand, why don't they use the money, you know, build factories down here and be producing those goods? So I don't think, you know, I don't believe in those dollar dollar thing because it's just a um, way of, you know, Capital flights. Yes, I'm aware that the Naira is now a floating currency. Well, I know that it's been determined by market forces. The problem, I don't know the direction the market forces are going through. But uh, I guess that's the sure way to know how the true value of the Naira itself. You know, because all these government regulations and um, forced tears, in fact, they are just too much for me to even handle it. So I guess if they put it on the market forces, we now know where our Naira really stands. So I guess everybody has to now wake up and look inwards and start looking for what to export. Even if it's Ugu, we export it. Um, the Naira being a floating currency, in layman terms, just involves the Naira floating up and down in, in terms of the exchange stability. Um, currently, the, the way the Nigerian economy functions, we use the dollar a lot. So um, currently it's having an effect on the economy, the usage of the dollar. So if we could um, first and foremost diversify the Nigerian economy by engaging in agricultural activities and reduce importation, we could, we could develop and help the Nigerian economy in, in its Naira exchange before we can talk about the dollar and the rest. But they all have a way to interplay and everything. <laughs> So I think it's interesting that on the streets, people kind of got that market forces were now going to be determining the FX rates. But it felt like they didn't really get how it was going to impact them and their businesses mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. So basically, the introduction of the futures market means that people no longer have to hoard dollars in anticipation of scarcity. They no longer have to be afraid that, oh, the price is going to go up so high in the future that they have to buy it now to hoard it and it helps businesses plan ahead because you can now take advantage of the futures market and things like the airlines can now get their money out so hopefully that will reduce um, the prices of tickets exactly. um, fuel might become cheaper because there's a reduced pressure on the demand for dollars um, the inflationary pressure might decrease as well so the prices might start coming down gradually and people who have kids abroad and need to pay school fees, say, next year, can take advantage of the new um, policy. But the thing is, I feel like it's really important for banks to 
be really efficient in executing the, um, this new policy. So people need to be sure that when they go into their banks, there's not going to be a lot of bureaucracy involved in getting that foreign exchange. And the government needs to be careful, or the CBN needs to be careful in making sure that people can trust their word, that in a few months' time, they're not going to go back and reverse you know, the decision. Those are the things that are going to foster certainty. But Sunji, how long do you think it's going to take the market to adjust? Because I think people think it's immediate, but yeah. we still have a parallel market and it's going to take a while for it to get to... Even out. Yeah, yeah so a lot, of, a lot of people saw the excitement from analysts and we, we can be like that, forgive us. <laughs> yes. um, we were so excited that day that we forgot to explain to people who were not, you know, in the financial services sector, what we were excited about. about. So it, it's not that um, after the policy was created, the next day, Naira we'll was going change. to just go to like 150 or something like that. We, we just were excited at the fact that the process had started. So we're, we're looking, we're hoping that between six to 12 months, we should have all that pressure removed from the market and then the market can start working normally. And then what Arisa said about the futures market, you can just seamlessly walk into your bank and get all those sorted out for you. But now, I think the issues that we have is the banks are still shrouding a lot of this in secrecy. And sometimes it's because, um, I'm not saying that's what you guys are doing, <laughs> but um, sometimes it, it feels like it's, it helps you get a bit of a larger margin. Because I, I, I was talking to somebody today and he said that he was trying to buy pounds and then his bank was telling him to buy it at a, a cross rate. So a cross rate is he wants to buy pounds, but instead of just buying pounds, the bank gets him to buy dollars, then he uses dollars to buy pounds. I mean, I mean, seriously, it makes it more expensive. So, I mean, if the banks can be able to make this a bit more seamless for customers, uh, it will help everybody, you know, be a bit more comfortable and there won't be any pressure. So I think banks just need to make it seamless for people. So as, as, as it continues to be a more seamless transaction, more people will trust it and they will find less need to actually want to hoard dollars. Because right now, even though the process has been made, some people are still a bit skeptical yeah. and saying, should I? And should banks I have a big role to play in explaining the process to exactly. their customers and encouraging them so that we'll move away from buying from Malans and take advantage of a more organized market. You know, market. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Analyze This. I'm Arisa Ugu, and we can continue the conversation on social media. The handle is at Sandani TV. The hashtag is Analyze This. And my handle is at Smart Money Arisa. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Tunji Andrews. Till next time, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Faust, aka Faust the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward.